What an amazing morning we just had. Please, another round of applause for our speakers, our guests. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for celebrating 10 years of achievement by Bentley CMT alumni in the world of marketing. Now, we will be having a panel discussion about careers with Alisa Hammond from the Bentley Careers Department. So grab a seat and please, thank you for being here. All right, so are we here? Yes, I'm on? Okay, oh well thanks for that small amount of applause. <laughs> um, so welcome back. My name is Alyssa Hammond. I'm the Director of Undergraduate Career Education and Outcomes, otherwise known as Undergraduate Career Services. And it's our pleasure to be co-sponsors of today's event. I want to thank Ian um, for including us, as well as putting this whole day together. It's a really special day. Um, it's something um, that when he told me that he was putting together, I was you know, like, oh, I'm so happy, and uh, applauding it, because it's, it's really important for you all to hear from professionals out in the field, especially alumni, um, in terms of not only what's happening in the industry, but also how are these alums um, making their way in the job market. So um, without further ado, I'd like to welcome back to the stage Dennis Brosnan, Sonia Manhat, Manat? Manat? It's Manat. Manat, all right, I got it right. And uh, Fiona Kelman. And uh, yes, thank you, please. <laughs> thank you very so much. Nice. Uh, so uh, when they asked me what, what kind of questions am I going to ask you, I said, oh, it's all about you. So this hopefully will be easy um, and fun. And we'll talk about Dennis's mother and uh -huh. you know, all sorts of fun, intimate <laughs> things. Very nice. <laughs> um, so maybe we'll get there. But, um, but let's get started. So you know, I think, again, we've heard a lot about kind of the high level things that you do within your companies and your industries. But let's talk about more of kind of the, where did you start? Um, what are your stories? What are your career journeys? How did, you know, where, where, where are you coming from? Where have you been and where do you want to go? So we'll start with Dennis. Wow, okay. So yeah, my, my story. So I graduated, I went to uh, Worcester State University undergraduate and I graduated in 2009, which was right when the uh, financial crisis had kind of happened. And so at that point, there was really no jobs anywhere. So there wasn't really a conversation in my mind that I was going to look for a job, really. I knew right, right away <clears throat> I wanted to go to a, a grad school, an MBA program, and specifically one around Boston. And so um, Bentley, I applied to Bentley. I got into the day MBA program and did that for two years. Um, when I was there, I was at the CMT for a year with everyone else here. And yeah, graduated 2011. Uh, after that, I had a quick job at a SEO, uh, PPC, online advertising company. Uh, which, which is great first job, but not exactly what I wanted to do. From there, I went to Forrester Research uh, in a consulting role, which was more aligned to what I wanted to do, uh, working with a lot of different clients and companies. I learned a lot from people there, internal and externally. And then got my job at Sonos, where I've been for the last three years. Uh, Sonos is great because it's, uh, I'm, I'm a tech, a lot of people you know, enjoy technology, but I consider myself always someone who's really up to speed with that. Uh, what they're doing in the space is really interesting. It's always moving, and my actual position there is, is a lot of fun too. So I'm there now, and I, I consider myself, or I would hope I will stay there for quite some time. So that's me, uh, very quickly. Um, yeah, moving forward, uh, I, I, like to I like to stay in the marketing, consulting, or I guess uh, research realm. It's a nice place. There's always something to learn. There's always new methodologies and data and information that's out there. So it's really just increasing my skill set and climbing that ladder and, you know, just keep on going. Um, well, you know, everyone's journey is a little different. Uh, so I had work experience prior to I came to Bentley. Um, I worked with technology companies marketing for them. Uh, the last job that I had before I joined Bentley was at Gartner, uh, which is, yep. you know, incidentally a competitor uh -huh. of Forrester. Uh -huh. uh, so I was uh, in Connecticut and then I moved to Massachusetts and joined the MBA program here. Uh, I was always interested in marketing because my undergraduate degree is in marketing also. Um, after I finished my MBA and, you know, was at the CMT for about two years uh, while I was doing the program here. Uh, and then immediately after, I took a break because I had my daughter. Um, so, uh, you know, the, the gap was about two years and then I went back. And incidentally, when I went back after that gap, 
I didn't go back into technology. I uh, went to financial, um, went to the financial industry, and I've been there now for about mm, four years, five years, I'd say. Um, in terms of what I do, it's all digital, and despite the trial that I was put on earlier <laughs> when I was at the panel, <laughs> I, I love what I do. Um, so I work for a community bank, um, and you know, like I said, it's, it's, uh, it's a relatively smaller financial institution, but there's a lot of autonomy, there's a lot of independence, and there is a lot of um, buy-in from the leadership, from the organization, to get ahead in terms of digital. Um, so that's what I'm doing right now, just planning and um, you know, trying to take the bank to that next level uh, in terms of uh, their online banking, mobile apps, um, the website, um, SEO, SEM, you know, just the presence online. That's what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. uh, so my um, MSMA, I graduated here in 2010, was a second career for me. So my undergrad is from the Pennsylvania State University in Mass Communications. I worked for two years in banking afterwards and then uh, received my MBA from University of Denver out in Colorado. Uh, after that, I worked for UPS uh, in Baltimore in marketing research and wanted to be on the sales side and went into wholesale lending and worked for Banks in New York and did commercial and subprime and Fannie Freddie uh, <laughs> wholesale lending. So I was a rep for banks and uh, banks and uh, big brokers were my clients. Uh, that market tanked in 2008, uh, so I was jobless, and I had to figure out what I was going to do. I always loved marketing research, and I uh, looked into schools, and I also took the LSAT uh, because I was, gonna, I was thinking about law school at the same time. Um, in 2010, there were only four marketing research schools that were pretty prominent, Bentley being one of them, University of Georgia, uh, University of Southern Illinois and uh, UNC um, in Raleigh, uh, not the Chapel Hill, but I, I don't think it's UNC, North Carolina State. And then Madison had um, an MBA with research. And I knew when I looked at top 10 careers that market research was one of them. And uh, I wanted a program because I had an MBA already, not a lot of work experience that I could get in and out. And I was able to do that. So I did my MSMA um, at Bentley in, t in 12 months. I started in January and graduated in December. Uh, after that, I moved to Washington, D.C., where I worked for Gallup um, on their management consulting side for three years. Uh, I then went and worked in customer insights for Freddie Mac. Uh, remember, I was a wholesale lender. So Freddie Mac was a good fit uh, for me because I knew that industry. Um, I got sick of the D.C. rat race. I grew up in Pittsburgh, and so a year and a half ago, what was the fastest way that I could get home? I have little nieces there. And I went remote, and so now I work for the ACT uh, in Iowa City, and I'm a big proponent of remote work. I was a sales rep before, so I worked out of my house, so for me, uh, that transition wasn't really that difficult. Um, and uh, I still believe that market research is um, a, a great uh, area to be in. Uh, I mentioned UX before. I thought about going into UX when I was here at Bentley. Um, you know, University of Pittsburgh, which didn't have a programming customer insights, now has an MS in customer insights. I had an intern working for me uh, that graduated today at noon, and he had uh, two job offers um, uh, this week. So I still think that there's a lot of demand for it. Um, I think the great thing about market research is that you can, go in, uh, you can be in strategy as well. And so where I see myself in the future is uh, more um, you know, uh, being part of uh, research and also a uh, strategy. Great. Wow. Very different paths, yeah. um, which is wonderful. So um, circling back to your education here at Bentley, what do you, do you find um, that you, you really leverage, you know, in your day to day and when you were getting, looking for your job, what were the experiences, the courses that you took when you were here that you found particularly helpful? Um, like, you know, in terms of getting to where you are now, but also where you are now and, and, and the day-to-day -day life yeah. that you live. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think we're laughing because uh, we all, all three of us, uh, I, I knew uh, Dennis and I worked with Sonia with Ian Cross. And so I had been out of school for nearly 10 years when I, when I did my second <laughs> degree. So Sonia and I were in econometrics together. Uh, so imagine not taking statistics or anything for 10 years and going into econometrics, which I think was probably one of the toughest classes I've taken. 
and especially in the MSMA program. Um, I still work in SPSS. I, I understand statistics very well now. I believe that that was essential um, to my career development as much as I ruled through that class. I also um, rallied Ian Cross. I knew that he was the head of the CMT. And I worked at the CMT for only a semester, but I was on him. <laughs> I was like, I want to work here. I'm here. You know, I want to be a part of this. I don't care if I get paid. I don't care. Like, I, I want to be in here. I want to do whatever I can. Um, I also had an internship that I, you know, that, uh, Bentley helped me with at Overdrive um, in Boston, which was in digital. So for me, I was extremely aggressive because I was a little bit older, probably, of what I wanted to do. And um, I had like a plan of attack. <laughs> yeah, sure. So for me, I'll second what you mentioned about like the technical skills. Um, like there's a lot of things, even in my job now, uh, like th th having the ability to at least know how to use some of these market analytics and research tools that like you mentioned SPSS, but other things like R, uh, even knowing a little bit of Python, right? Anything <laughs> yeah. uh, is great to have just so you have that in your, in your back pocket there. You don't need to be a coder per se, but just to know how to, to leverage that is huge. And then on top of that too, like survey data is still a big thing. We always talk about behavioral data is really important. Uh, again, at Sonos, like we capture a lot of information about what's happening on the players and any errors, and we do use a lot of our own tools to, to go through that, but also classic market research and understanding about uh, what consumers' perceptions are and the information they provide through survey and being able to actually uh, leverage either SPSS or other survey-based tools, that's super important, very important. So having that skill set's great. Uh, obviously things like you know, Excel and PowerPoint at this point is right. probably not worth mentioning, but it really does, it really <laughs> does make a difference. Do it, it does, it must, like if you can do that quickly and efficiently and you can make pretty looking things, you know, it, yeah. it does matter for sure. Uh, but in regards to like what I, um, back to my, back to MBA, right? Like one thing that I wish I did better, I guess we could spin it that way, is that you always hear consistently, right, about like networking. Like it's super important, get out there, network. Mm -hmm. And when I was in my, uh, my MBA class, and I was 22, 23, and I didn't, I was like, yeah, whatever. Like, I'll just get through this degree, and then I'll be out there, and they're gonna hire me, I have an MBA, and another master's degree, like, I'll be good. <laughs> like, I don't need to talk to anybody. And that is not the case. Spoiler alert. So one of the things you should, I would recommend, and I'm sure everyone hears it a lot, but it's like, really take the time to get to know either uh, both one another, but also when you have the ability to talk to people here or anything else in these kind of panels, like yeah. people are typically pretty nice and open yeah. for helping. And I find that in my career now, looking upwards, but also helping those that are below and trying to make it w its way there too. Yeah. So I would just say, put some effort into that because it does help tremendously. Absolutely. No, absolutely. Sure it does. <laughs> absolutely, yeah, I agree. Um, so I think when I, I passed out in 2010 from Bentley, so I, they had like one social marketing course, mm -hmm. which I think Professor Weinberg um, yeah. held, right. That's right. and that's the one I took, and it has helped me immensely. I think um, you know a lot of the things that I did in that class, I'm still using. Um, the other thing that really has helped me and has been super helpful has been my experience at the CMT. So I'd say that you know while you're um, paying attention to the academics, it's very important that you gather experience, like actual working experience, um, because that really helps. It's, things are a little different when you step out of college and university and you know, get into the workforce. Um, so that's huge. In fact, we recently I did a focus group with the CMT because you know, that's something uh, not many in the bank knew about, you know, mm. that there's a focus group. They were, we, were, we are kind of revamping our website for, um, to be compliant with ADA and we wanted to get some data. So you know, I went in, I spoke with Ian and we did a focus group which was mm. fantastic. Um, so just knowing th things like these helps. Yeah. Um, just get practical experience. I would, I would also say, I mean, I helped someone in uh, DC that wanted to transition to market research and he did some thing on the political side. But he's like, I just did it for free. I, um, you know, I wasn't being paid. I said, well, no one has to know that. No one has to know that you did something for free. I mean, that was a job, right? I mean, I worked at Overdrive here for free. You know, no one, <laughs> internship. And that's how it was in 2010. You were lucky to have an internship. So, you know, don't undersell yourself. I think we all do that. You look at a job description, and uh, I think females have a tendency to do this, that you say, you know, um, 
there's some statistic out there that uh, if, some, if females don't fit 50% of the job description, they don't apply. If men uh, don't fit 80% of it, they still apply. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, don't undersell yourself. You have a lot of skills and you can work things around. And even when you think, oh, like in class, like I did that project or the presentation, I mean, I asked the intern that I hired, well, like, what, um, you know, projects did you work on that you think are relevant? Because all that comes into place and the companies, maybe you've worked on a project and you worked with a company here that's so important. And so, again, don't undersell yourself. I mean, you come from good programs here. Yeah, and I mean, learn to negotiate. I think there's a negotiation yeah. class that, mm -hmm. you know, so take that if you have to. But, yeah. Um, and again, I think that applies more to women than yeah, right. Than again, men. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I just want to follow up on, on that part too. Like, I'll mem I remember back when I was applying for things, a lot of these entry level positions, you know, they'd often ask for like <laughs> five years work experience, right. managing a team of 50. <laughs> and you're like, how is anyone going to possibly just yeah. apply for those positions? Because I, now that we're on the other side of the fence, and this sounds awful, but like a lot of times, like, yeah, we'll just, we'll just throw some stuff in here and see what happens. But yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> just go for it like just yeah, because it says there and you don't necessarily have that like it doesn't mean that you shouldn't apply for it or push yourself through it because if you have a, a nice looking uh, resume or background and you fit the position like that's just because you're not don't hit all the check boxes doesn't, doesn't mean you're out yeah. go for it great well my work is done bye no I'm <laughs> kidding um, fantastic advice uh, a couple of things that I just wanted to piggyback on is number one networking is so critical so for everyone here, you're doing the right thing by just being here today because you can meet these wonderful alums and the other alums that are here and also faculty and other staff members. We're all you know, kind of cycling through today. So take advantage of today to do that networking. Also, if you're not comfortable networking, talk to career services. You know, I'm, I know that the majority of the, of the audience are, are master's degree students. Um, you should be going to grad career services. If you have not made a visit in the last six months, do not leave campus before the end of the semester without making a visit over there and talking to your dedicated career advisor. They can help you. If you're an undergrad career services, I mean an undergrad student, um, we have a new um, advisor, Paul Stanish, has just joined us to advise you as well as myself and Colleen Murphy right now. So, um, so we can help you not only know how to do networking, but also the resources that we have available for that. Um, also, you know, the fact that you're working, you know, the internships, the work in the CMT, you know, to your point, Fiona, they don't know if you're not paid on a resume. It doesn't <laughs> say. It also doesn't say if it's part time right. or not. Right. So, you know, so do those part time yeah. volunteer experiences. Yeah. They make a difference. Put the projects on your resumes. Um, just hugely, hugely important. And also, you're here for such a short time as a grad student that you really need to make the most of that ex of the time that you're here on campus because it is so short as opposed to a four-year undergraduate experience. So, um, so with all that in mind, you know, I'm glad that Dennis had said, well, if I, you know, if I could go back and do something different, this is what I would do. Is there anything that either of you, looking back, would have yeah. told your younger selves, oh, you know what, you should have done this, <laughs> or you wish you had done differently? Yeah. I would have taken some harder classes. I mean, <laughs> harder classes. <laughs> wow. I mean, as a, you know, I was like, oh, I'm not taking data mining. Like, no way. Um, to Dennis's point, um, to know a little bit about R, Python, or, you know, when I first came out of here, I, I did a little sequel in Unicom. I didn't last long. I mean, that wasn't for me. But it's, you know, you're here, um, you know, take the harder classes and don't worry about the grade. I mean, I don't think anyone really ever asked me what my grades were. Right. Yeah, that's true. You know? I've never once ever been asked that. Yeah. Ever. Just learn, you know. Um, I probably take more design classes. I mean, so it just goes to show that, you know, you have to, although you need to have specialized skills, it's also very important that you're able to pick up as you go, you know, because once you're in the workforce, it's not about mm -hmm. just doing your job. Sometimes it's a team, you know. Um, um, so over the years, you know, I've always worked with designers, but, you know, I've picked up, you know, Adobe and all of these um, software platforms that are available out there. Make use of them because I think Bentley has a lot of these different labs um, that you can leverage to, to learn these different software programs. It just adds to the resume, I think. Great. Well, I want to allow for time for questions from our audience. Um, does anyone have any questions? Okay, great. So I think there's someone with a mic, so we're going to ask them to float over to you so that way we can capture it for the live feed, so. Hi. 
Hello, uh, my name is Alex. Um, I am a master's student here for uh, MSMA, Marketing Analytics. And I was wondering if you have uh, any examples of companies that you would recommend for someone that wants to start their career and learn a lot in the first couple of years, um, specifically in customer insights. I mean, I worked at Gallup, right? So um, I don't know if you want to stay in the area or not, but I would seek, uh, I think that you know, I interviewed with McKinsey, I, I worked at Gallup. I, I think those companies, you're going to work 60 to 70 hour weeks and you're probably going to, you know, work in eight different industries, but you're going to learn the best. And no one, it's, it's kind of funny, no one really cares what I've done after Gallup. They care that I worked at Gallup, <laughs> you know. So I would recommend, um, I, I, don't just stay here because, you know, you can go anywhere and come back. My, uh, just to follow up to your, uh, I'm also a, MS in marketing analytics. When you talk about like learning a lot or what you want to do, like are you? I would like to learn more about you because you can go different ways, right? You can be more like strategy based, or you can go like really technical. Like what? When you talk about learning more, do you have an idea of like kind of what you're looking for? So yes, um, I would like to use data, but more in a strategy focused mm -hmm. um, environment. Okay. Yeah, I mean, Gartner. <laughs> Forrester. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, IDG in yeah. Framingham. You yeah. know, yeah. those are some places. A lot of times, it's also self-driven. You know, if you want to learn, just mm -hmm. go out there, and you know, there's there's a ton of um, ways to learn online nowadays. You know, there's Lynda.com, there's Udemy, there's and they're not expensive. Um, so just go venture out and you know, do them yourself. You don't have to join a company to learn. Yeah. Another thing too is a lot of. It really comes down to like what you want to be doing, right? Like, to, to what we're, you were saying earlier, kind of like negotiation. It's also like put yourself on a pedestal. Yeah, it's right. like you know, yeah. it's, you put in the time. Like, yeah. it's not about like where I can. Well, yeah, it's about what you can learn, obviously. But like more importantly, like where would you like to go? You know, when I was in, when I was first doing my interviews and looking for a job, like I was doing like a shotgun method, honestly. Like <laughs> I got it got to the point where I was applying to like 75 places. I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. It was brutal. <laughs> Uh, eventually I got a job that ended up working, but like going back to what then, I would have not done that approach. I was more, I was more confused or I was more worried about getting a job after school than finding like a good job out of school. Not to say it wasn't a good job, it was, but I got lucky. <laughs> so, so anyway, what I'm, what I'm trying to say is I guess it's more important maybe to think about like the industry or the place you want to yeah. be and then from there just do your diligence and find a space because if you have the skills and the drive, you can make it work yeah. wherever you want really. Right. Yeah, knowing the right job, like getting a job and getting the right job are two very different yeah. things. Yeah, totally. Um, and so what Dennis is talking about is kind of that throwing everything against the wall to see what sticks. And it's and to your point, it is a brutal way to do a job search. Yep. Um, even though you're a student, you can still be selective in what you're doing. You should be selective because otherwise you're putting yourself in a position where you're going to be looking for a new job a year later. Yeah. What's the point? Take the time now yeah. to do your due diligence and to research the companies and the industries and locations and, and go for those companies. It's okay to be selective. It's more important for you to do that um, because in the long run, you know, you're setting yourself up for success. Um, otherwise, you, you could be, you know, Dennis was lucky. He's mm. you know, admittedly lucky, you know, got right place, right time type of a situation. But, but it's okay to do that. We want you to do that. Um, know what industry you want, what job you want, and what geographic location you want. You know those three things, and you will do a really great targeted job search for yourself. Um, and just, and, but keep at it. Apply to those 75 jobs, but make sure that there's 75 jobs that you want, mm -hmm. not 75 jobs just to apply for 75 jobs. No one's going to give you a medal for applying to 75 jobs, right? Apply to 75 of the right jobs, and if you get one of them, you'll be in great shape. Yeah, you know, nobody talks of bad work experiences, but I'll, you know, I'll tell you, I joined a technology company that was local, and uh, I, maybe I didn't do my research well, but, you know, it wasn't a good fit, and, uh, you know, I was there for about a year, a year and a half, and then I just, one day, I quit, <laughs> you know, because, and now we, you have resources to, yeah. to do your research before you join a company, so you have, yeah. I, I was talking to Maureen, you know, about Glassdoor, you know, go on there, read the reviews, and talk to your advisors here. Mm -hmm. um, it's, you'll always find another job, yeah. you know, but find the right one. 
I'm the same thing. Um, it's not even on my resume. I worked for somewhere for three months uh, coming out of Bentley, um, doing Unica and SQL, like totally, I mean, customer insights. I left after three months. So, uh, and then I was worried and I had three offers uh, within the next month. So, don't get stuck in something because you think you have to be there. I mean, it's like anything else, right? You, you go, sometimes you don't make the right thing, don't beat yourself up, just keep moving on and yeah. be positive and move forward. And the market's great right now. Yeah, the market's great. So, yeah. like, yeah. you have the power, so go yeah, for yeah. it. Mm -hmm. okay. Hey, other questions? More questions? Great. They're making you run, Carmen. You're getting your exercise. <laughs> nice. It's oh, oh okay. <laughs> All right. go for it. It's okay. I just wanted to add that we do have a prize available from one of our sponsors today. Converse is giving a prize to the best question in this section, so oh, students, nice. get your questions ready. A little bribery <laughs> goes a long <laughs> way <laughs> in <laughs> footwear. Yeah, what kind of shoes are you talking about? Do we get shoes? Or? Yeah, All right. Right. pressure's <laughs> on. That's fine. Uh, so my question is going about when you first, I guess it's different for all three of you because you can't, you all had different points in your career when you graduated here. How did you choose, I guess, the balance between finding the right position for you, leave it after your grad degree, um, between kind of like the entry, mid, or kind of experience level positions? Uh, I think a lot of us here are spread amongst where we are in our life. and. If you already have a decade of work experience, trying to pull in 70 hours a week, like a start, is a little bit rough. So how did you go about that choice and how you chose? I mean, I, I did the 70 hour weeks and I was in my <laughs> mid thirties, so when I came out, um, but I chose that, I, you know, I had a scare in 2008. I mean, that was a scary time. Um, I owned a house, I had to sell it, I came up here. So I didn't, for me, it was like I'm throwing myself in. I, I felt lucky to have a job in 2010. You know, the market was very different. Um, but I, I mean, I, I totally understand what you're saying. I mean, someone uh, that was married with kids could not have done what I did for that long. But that's, you know, you have to, you definitely have to weigh that. But in 2010, the market was very different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. totally. Yeah. I mean, it's tough to find the, you know, work-life balance. I have a daughter and you know I work full time so it's you know I'm on my phone checking my email 24 hours a day so you you don't really uh, cut off I guess but you find a balance you you manage you know time management is great um, delegation is great um, and not delegation not just professionally but personally too you know just find the right network uh, have your family rally around you I think that's what works yeah. um, yeah, you just, you know, it's tough. <laughs> and I had a, I did an interesting experience when I was finishing. So as I mentioned, my path was, I, I went pretty much straight from undergrad to grad school. I had some work experience between then, but nothing substantial. And what was tough for me is that, so I was in the day MBA program doing the dual degree, uh, the MSMA. And when I was, what was tough is that my day MBA program, I, I was by far the youngest in my group. And most of them are at least five years or older which is fine, right? A lot of great experiences in education, these guys. But when it came two years later, when we were graduating, they were getting these you know, mid-tier, upper-tier positions, you know, because they've had that five, 10, 15 years experience. Meanwhile, I was coming in with you know, six months, maybe a year, a few internships. You know? And so I thought, and this kind of goes back to the conversation earlier about networking, I had this intuition in my head that as soon as I got this degree in my hand, or these two degrees in my hand, like, it'd just be like, oh, come on, like, who, who wants this? It and, uh, <laughs> and, uh, that, didn't, that didn't happen, right? And so what I'm, what I'm trying to say to you, I guess, to your question is that I had to kind of re reevaluate my, uh, what I wanted to be, where I was shooting, because I realized pretty quickly that those positions that my peers were, were kind of getting was not where I belonged at that time. And for me, it was more important to do what you've asked and go a little bit into the position where maybe I take mm -hmm. a little bit of a pay cut, but I use yeah. that time to invest in myself and yep. use that to kind of climb and, and build. Yeah. So that was the way I had to kind of work with it in my, in my mind, and I think it yeah. worked out so far. Yeah, I, I agree with you on that. I mean, you know, I was in sales before 2010, so I was making less money than I was in 2010, you know, when I was in DC, um, you know, in the nature of the game. but. Everything happens, you know, you're, you're, it's not like you're going to get this job and this is where you're going to be stuck for the rest of your life. I mean, 
you're going to have lows and you're going to have highs and you're going to move forward and sometimes you're not and you know companies everyone has to take pay cuts but you know if you're a great worker and you're driven i mean that's that's what you need things start falling into place so yeah, yeah. and you, you know you, you know you feel that yeah, you, you know, you learn as you go. You yeah. learn your own strengths also. Um, right. You know, so you realize, oh, I, I have a great eye for design, or I'm great at analytics, or I'm great at web analytics, you know. So it, it, as you go, you learn, and then um, that's how, so you have to invest in the right strengths, you know. Be very targeted in what you're looking for. Absolutely. And also, you have a lot of, again, you have control over your destiny. You have the ability to research these companies and finding out how they value you, yeah. right? Based on your level of experience, based on your, your education and, and you know, where do I, where, where would I fit into your culture? Where would I fit into your company based on where I'm coming from? You can ask those questions before you start applying and you should. Yeah. Because that way you have a better sense as to, okay, well, if X company is hiring for mid-level, I'm right there. Um, whereas why company, I might need to go a step down, um, you know, in terms of level. So why guess when you could literally reach out to these companies or talk to alums that are within those companies and do informational meetings and ask those questions? They're, they're valid and you should know so that way you're not wasting time, you know, throwing applications out to, to positions and companies that may not necessarily fit what you're looking for or you fit what they're looking for. And also from that cultural perspective, you know, if you've got family and kids, culture matters, right? Yeah, it, right it matters right. to all of us. It doesn't oh, yeah. matter where yeah. you are. And, you, know, yeah. you could be single and you know, young and single. You could be married with kids. Yeah. You could be in a lot of different places. Culture is really oh, important. Yeah. And important there are ways for you to assess culture yeah, before you walk matters. in the door. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so again, you should do that through networking and through you know, taking part in programs and, and going on site visits and you know, reaching out to people through LinkedIn and Mentor Marketplace and asking, hey, can I sit down and talk to you for 20 minutes about what it's like to work here, what you're doing, and kind of I'm trying to figure out you know, if this is the right place for me and the right role for me. Um, and, and people are so willing to talk to you because human beings are what we learned from Pierre earlier. It's all about us, right? So <laughs> you talk to people about them. They love talking about themselves. So we're all, yeah. we've got that human thing called an ego. So, you know, appeal to it. They will love to talk to you about themselves. Um, and you can get a lot of good information along the way. Great. Even in interviews, uh, I mean, you know, it's, it's a two-way process. Mm -hmm. yeah. Ask questions. It's not just the company, uh, you know, the interviewers asking you questions. I mean, we get these candidates almost every month, you know, because they're expanding. And it's good to see, and it's encouraging to see the candidate asking questions because then, you know, at the very start, you know where is the fit. Um, so don't be afraid to ask questions, you know, be it culture related, be it work related. If you're not clear about your job description and what is it that you're expected to do, ask questions. On that note, I literally do not hire or recommend anyone I interview if they don't come to me with substantial and right. meaningful questions. Like, I leave, if it's an hour interview, I will ask them questions for 15, 10 minutes and then leave the rest. Because I, and this is maybe just my style, but interview style, I find, A, for, for what you just said, it's super important to make sure that both, it's like a relationship, right? You want both sides to, to work this thing out and it's good to understand both of those sides. But, so that's one part of that. But the second part, just from an interviewing perspective, when there's someone that comes to the table with understanding and knowledge and right. they did their research and they yeah. want it, like that is a total different experience than yeah. someone that's like, so what do you, like, what do you, where do you go to lunch here? It's like, you clearly <laughs> yeah. don't yeah. care. Yeah. Yeah. Like right. then, then back to my shotgun method, that's, seven, that's why that doesn't work. Because right. if you do yeah. that, you can't do that for 70, right? Exactly. So that's, uh, it's just super yeah. important and, yeah. and do that in your interviews. It's yeah. really, and by the way, someone that doesn't give you the time to ask questions, you probably don't want to work there. So. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Great advice. Okay, other questions? Come on, you're getting some really, really good advice here. We have a price available, guys. And there's, oh, we've got one right there. There you go. We're moving to career counseling. Hi. Hi, I'm Sandy. Hi, hi. Thank you for sharing. Um, I'm currently a first year student. I'm an SBA student here, and then you know I'm seeking a summer internship. I'm wondering like whether you've been into my position that you know all my friends, most of my friends, they've already found a job for summer, but me, I'm like still looking. And then 
I'm so hungry for a job because like no matter what I apply, I would think I would bring more myself. Wow, this looks pretty good. It fits me so well. And then after I interview with this one, and then there's another interview came out, and I was like, wow, this company fits me well again. I mean, I feel like most of them fit me well, but no one got back to me, and then. I just feel it's hard to choose and what to think about. I mean, what's the next step? Mm -hmm. It's really hard and awkward in this position because yeah. you are so hungry for a job, but there are so many opportunities, but how you choose them and then how you think. I mean, which one is the perfect one for me? Which mm -hmm. one is the fit one for me exactly? Right. Because when you are in the position that you're so hungry for a job, you kind of brainwash yourself. Yeah. Like I'm doing it right now for myself because I've kind of, I have to apply for a job that maybe initially you know, I don't think they face me, but after a while, I think, well, I don't have a job now. I mean, maybe I don't have, like, um, you know, I don't have chance to, you know, cho to choose, like, I have to like this job and then brainwash myself constantly. Mm -hmm. And I think, well, this job actually looks pretty good. So have you ever you been to this stage before? And then how did you <laughs> solve this problem? Uh, I think that it's like dating, right? When you're looking yeah, for a job. Totally. I mean, you're opening yourself up to rejection and, and not rejection, right? So it is, it is there's mind games there. Um, I worked for a company that I didn't, you know, it's, I didn't, it wasn't paid. Um, and, you know, I was telling you the other day, his question to me, and I, I couldn't believe it, and, uh, was the question was, if there was a school bus, right, how many golf balls could you fit in? I got that it? question too. Oh, really? And I was yeah. like, going I can't even believe this. You know, and I, a couple thousand. And he wrote, a, get, threw a pencil over across the table and said, figure it out. You're better than that. <laughs> you know, and I did. And I got the, I got the, I was like, there's no way this guy is like the biggest jerk. And that's who I worked for for the summer. I mean, I got it. So <laughs> there's always going to be that thing. Like, I know who you're talking you about. You walk out, <laughs> right, you walk out <laughs> and think, wow, that was terrible, or I, I, you know, I always come out of things and I think, okay, I could have said that better, and I write it down and I keep, some, I keep a portfolio of like uh, interview questions, right? So if I ever need, like, what was I asked that I maybe could have answered better or prepare for? But you, you're opening yourself up, right? so you're gonna have, you know, your head spinning. I mean, that's just the nature of the game. Yeah. Have you thought of starting something of your own? That's an option. I'm saying, have you thought of starting something of your own? opportunities it fits me well but another one it fits me well as well but they are actually two different opportunities like it's hard it's a challenge you know and see I don't like all the things that I have to do in yeah. my job right right you yeah. know there are some parts of it that I don't enjoy as much yeah. but you know you it, you take both you know you take the good with the bad yeah, there's no there's, perfect job right there's right. you know and there's sometimes there's the environment in organizations yeah. some you know the culture it can be anything um, you know, you might not like to do repetitive tasks, but at times you have to do them. So There's, um, <laughs> no. It's not fun. It's called job. Yeah. <laughs> to go on. No, like, it's called yeah. work. Not yeah. fun. That's why. Yeah. But to your, to, I want to go on the, the relationship metaphor, because yeah. I think it works very well, actually, <laughs> yeah, is that you're not getting married to these, this job, yeah. right? Like, right. you can leave there whenever yeah. you want. Yeah. So. It, treat it like you're dating the job, right? Yeah. Start it. If you don't like it, just leave. Yeah, like yeah, it's yeah. not a, it's not the end of the world. Like don't go out with leave. It's just a <laughs> job. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Or just yeah. And the yeah. way I think about it too is like earlier in my career, I'm still in the you know early middle part of my career, I'd say. Yeah. But earlier, I was way it's way easier to go through these jobs and try one out. If you don't like it, whatever, go to the next one. And like yeah, yeah. the way I'm thinking about it long term, or at least my strategy here is like climb, 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 and then yeah. sustain or longer right, term, right. right? And so like you don't have to do that right away. Like yeah. just get out there. Also, just a small little thing. This is just a, a recent experience I had. We had a, a opened up an internship position for my team, and we got flooded with like 150 resumes. And so I'm not sure if what you're applying for, like similar kind of things where it's the floodgates open and everybody applies for it, but the littlest things, I know this sounds so superficial, but the, even the smallest things in like your design of your mm -hmm. resume can yeah. really matter. Because when you're looking at 150 of the exact same format, like name, line, 
education line. Like, I don't, it's tough. It's very, very hard, especially when you have a job and then you're also looking at 150 resumes. So, like, maybe just take a look at maybe some design aesthetic. Don't make it go crazy, but. And I would have, by the way, I came to you for a reason. Like, I was trying to get it. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. So, I sent it to all my students. And then I sent it to Korea to be posted. No, one of my students, I, oh, wow, thanks. I really appreciate this opportunity to serve us. I'm jumping on it right now. <laughs> I'm not quite sure how you think you're going to get jobs. <laughs> <laughs> so I would like to interrupt here. Hi. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Well, I, I, I just, can I just can I just add a couple of cents in um, to our friend? First of all, if you're if you're applying and you're getting interviews and the interviews are not converting into offers, you definitely need to take a step back and look at how you're doing in your interview. So again, this is where our office. Comes Go to career, go or your grad student. Go to graduate career services and ask them to mock interview you to go over how you're answering these questions because something might be happening in the interview itself that is not working, and they can tell you this is, may not be working for you. You might want to maybe do approach this answer in a different way. Also, what are you doing in terms of follow up? Are you sending thank you notes? Are you are you following up with these interviews? So so something might be happening in that process. Also, if you're finding that you're sending out a lot of applications and you're not getting interviews, to Dennis's point, you're, there might be something going on in your resume. Again, if you haven't been in grad career services lately, go. They can look at your resumes. They can look at your cover letters. You did GCDI, I hope. Um, so you know what you should be doing, but they're, they're there for you to work with you to help you develop those resources so that way your tools are looking and sounding great. And to Ian's point, Everyone, the job doesn't knock on your door. We don't have a magic <laughs> drawer that we pull open and say, here you go. It doesn't work that way. This is on you guys. You have to, we give you the plan, you have to work it, which means that you have to be the ones applying. So, you know, alums like Dennis are getting really frustrated because they're giving us their postings and yet we're not responding. You know, our students are not responding. Apply, apply. Our Bentley alums are out there wanting to hire you well. So, um, so please do it, do it, do it. Okay, last question. I think we have so I don't have a question. I have a statement to add on here. So <laughs> I'm a MBA 2017. I was working with Ian for two years at Center for Marketing Technology. Um, I don't know if you guys have already discussed about it, uh, the international student dimension. I believe she is international. Are you U.S. national? Yeah. You're U.S. national. So I'm from India. I don't hold a U.S. passport. So when I compete with U.S. passport holders, if I start the 100-meter race at zero, Americans start the 100-meter race at 50 meters. Yeah. I'll be very honest. Yeah. I have applied 671 applications to get a full-time job. I had an Excel sheet. I did interviews. I did everything with grad services I could. It eventually, so it's a matter of time. Eventually, everyone's going to get a job. It's not that no one's going to get a job. The efforts that international students have to put in are probably much more yeah. than a U.S. passport holder. I'll be very honest here. I don't blame school here, neither the recruiters. The policies have been changing. The government has changed. The immigration laws have been stringent. So the efforts are going to be more, but it's not going to be impossible. That's what I'm going to say here. There's hope. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Thank you. Harmon, how are we for time? Yes, so. Thank you guys for all of your questions. We're going to select the winner of the questions. 
and I think we're ready for the next panel. Okay, Christina. Well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you.